In this video, I will teach you how to make your own custom maps using Google My Maps. Let's get started. So here I am in Google My Maps. The best way, in my opinion, to get to Google My Maps is to go to the address bar and type in mymaps.google.com. That will take you in to My Maps. Once you're signed in, you should see a page similar to this one. Here are two My Map projects that I've made in the past in this account. But let's say I would like to now make a new My Map, and this one is going to be about the Spanish speaking world. And when I click to create a new map, Google is telling me that my My Map is going to be stored in Google Drive. At least some of the data will be stored there. That's fine with me. I click Create, and I'm taken to the Google My Maps interface. So what is Google My Maps, and how does it relate to the regular Google Maps? Well, of course, Google Maps can be used to search for and find locations around the world, and I can get directions to those places. That's fine and very useful. But with Google My Maps, Google basically gives me a copy of the entire Google Maps. But it's customizable just for me. I'll just click here where it says Untitled Map, and then I'll give my map a title. How about Capitals of the Spanish-speaking World? I can put in a description, click Save, and my Google My Map is now titled, but there's nothing really in it. So let's add to this Google My Map. Notice that I'm given an untitled layer, but just one to start with. I'm going to click where it says Untitled Layer, and I'll call this Central America. I'll click Save, and then I'm going to add some Central American countries where they speak Spanish onto this layer. Let's start with Guatemala City, Guatemala. So I typed in the city and the country and it took me right here and I'll click add to map and that quickly I've added a place and in fact a place mark to my Central America layer in my my map. Next let's add Honduras so I'll search for that. There it is. I'll click add to map and I'm on my way to completing this layer for Central America. I'll click add to my map. Now imagine that I continue to do that so that I get all the Central American Spanish speaking countries listed here. Great. So what I might do next is click to add another layer. Now let's think about layers. What is the purpose of layers in Google My Maps? What they're for is for allowing you to show and also hide certain content in your My Maps. Now, all of the layers are related. They're all capitals of the Spanish-speaking world in this case, but these place marks are in Central America. And if I don't need to see those right now, I can uncheck it and they're hidden from my map. If I need to see them, I click and they come back. So let's create a second layer. I click on Untitled Layer and I'll name this South America. And I'm going to go to Santiago, Chile and add it to South America. Now Google My Maps knew which of these two layers to put that on because I had recently created the South America layer. So if I now want to add another city and country to the Central America list, it's going to be a little tricky. I need to make sure that I click to select Central America and then I can search for El Salvador. Click add to map and El Salvador was added to the correct layer because I had clicked on it. So that's something to watch for as you work on your my map layers. Let's add one more South American capital. So I search for Lima, Peru in this case. I'll click add to map and there it is. So again, I can now zoom out and I can see all of the place marks, all of the locations really that I've added to my my map. But if I'm just interested right now in South America, I can hide the Central American countries or vice versa. I could hide the South American Spanish speaking countries. Let's look at a couple of other great things you can do with Google My Maps. Notice that my Santiago Chile place mark here just has the title and the latitude and longitude. I would like to add some more details to this place mark. I have some tools here to help me do so. The first is style. I can click to change the color of this place mark. Maybe I'll make it red. I could choose an icon to go with this place mark. Maybe a home symbol since I used to live in Chile. And you can see there are more icons below that you can choose from if you want. In addition to these style options, I can just click this pencil to edit the place mark. So here I could put in a description for this place mark. There we go. I can click save and it's been customized. Next to the edit pencil, I have this camera icon that I can use to add an image or a video. And there are some fantastic options here. If I click on photos, it's going to tap into my Google Photos account and I'll be able to very quickly and easily insert any of these images into my Google My Map. 
but there are other options too. I could search Google Images for Santiago Chile, and then with a click and another click, I can add that image into my place mark. If I change my mind, I can always delete it, or I could add another image. Notice that you can add YouTube videos as well. So there's one I could add, just click insert, and now that video is included alongside the image that I already selected. You can also upload images from your computer, which is a great option. I could browse my computer, find an image, and upload it in. I'm going to click Save to make those changes permanent. Notice what else you can do. With a click, you can get directions from where you currently are to this destination. So I could type my location here, and it would map out a route for me to take to get there. I'm going to click to delete that additional layer that was added. The final tool we have is just a delete button. If I want to remove this place from my layer, that's how I would do it. Now there are some other tools in Google My Maps. We have an undo tool, a redo tool. We have a hand that we can use to click and drag on the map. We have an add marker button. So I've been showing you how to add markers by simply typing in a location. It takes you there and then you add the marker to your layer. And look, it went to the wrong layer. Fortunately, I can click and drag to put it in the correct layer. So that's what I've been showing you. But what if you want a very specific place? You could search for that very specific place or you could just browse for it, find it, and then click here on this add marker button. And then you could click exactly on the map where you want that marker to be, maybe a description, and click Save. So that's another way to add place marks or markers onto your My Maps. A couple other tools we have, we can draw lines, driving routes, biking routes, walking routes. So I can just click and then click, 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 click to map out a route, or we could just think of it as a generic line or shape. Here we have a ruler tool, which is kind of fun. I can click and drag on this green space and then click again to end my measurement. And I can see what that distance is. It's a distance of 6.33 miles. This is amazing that I can measure places in the world that I've never been to and that I've never seen. Pretty amazing. I'm gonna tap escape. So let's say I'm done with my Google My Map. I could continue to add more layers, but I'm happy with this. What I could do is go down here and choose a base map. By default, it's just a regular map, but I could switch to a satellite view. I could switch to a terrain view so I can see mountains and forests and canyons and things a lot better. And there are several other options to choose from. I'm gonna go back to satellite view. And then once you've selected the type of base map that you want, the next thing to do is to consider whether or not you're gonna share this and how you would share it. So here at the top, if you click on share, there are some great sharing options. I can turn this switch on, which will make it so that this Google My Map will be visible to anyone with the link. If I want to make it a public My Map, so that you don't even really have to have the link. You can just search for it and find it. I could flip this switch. And then to make it really easy for a specific person to look at my My Map, I could just go down here where the URL is and click to copy that URL. And then I could paste that URL anywhere I want. And then anyone that clicks the link will be taken to my specific My Map. Notice that there's also an option to share on Drive. So if you're used to Google Drive, Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, etc., this will look very familiar to you. You can add specific people to the Google My Map. You can also change the general access. You can make it so that anyone with the link can be a viewer of this map, or anyone with the link could be an editor and could help you build a map. And then just click Copy Link and send that link out to people or post it online. I'll click done, but that's everything that you need to know to be able to use Google My Maps successfully. Whether you're a student or a teacher or a business person or anyone that needs to work with maps and customize them to highlight important locations, places you want to remember, or one of the best ways to use this is to plan out a vacation or a business trip. You can create your itinerary here in the order in which you're going to travel. There are just all sorts of ways that we can use Google My Maps. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also help me out by clicking the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.